Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. I kind of missed out on the Reverse the Verse summary that covered a lot of game systems from last week, so I'll take a look at that now. It had some quite important info on it. This week we will see some Carrick and Hurricane info, among some other ships that are going to be on this week's ATV. It's a ship shape special, basically. On the core tech side of Star Citizen, other than some minor and supporting modules that are not listed on the roadmap, almost all of the core tech will be in the game by the end of this year, so the end of 2018, other than star system transitions, which are currently not on the roadmap at all. That wormhole or jump point tech that will allow for those transitions requires object container streaming to come online first, and this is the last big thing they need to get into the game, really. There is some other stuff. So there's polish that they want to continue to do with their core tech still. Some of the other major things coming up core tech-wise this year that are on the roadmap are object container streaming, face over IP, voice over IP, their cloud tech, network improvements, that's all coming with 3.3, all those systems. In 3.4 in December, there's going to be server meshing and the associated tech with that, as well as more improvements to networking, CPU stuff, uh, general performance improvements as well. That's all core tech. There is a lot of R&D projects and other unlisted items in general that aren't core tech um, that are coming. Some of them might come, some of them will be binned or whatever, but there's some bits basically that are not on the roadmap yet. There's lots of stuff that's going on in the background, some of which will make it into the game. They've recently been working on Combat AI and have completed a two-week mocap pickup shoot for all the animation for that stuff. Melee-wise, you're going to be able to perform stealth takedowns in games. You're also going to be able to hit enemies with the stock or butt of your gun. And they want some form of unarmed combat as well, so you can push and punch people, something like that. In regards to Windows reallocating IDs for input devices and HOTASs and joysticks and stuff, it's something that needs to be fixed at the Windows end, so they're waiting for a fix for that to come out. However, um, they will look at putting something in place that tries to recognize devices uh, from their end if possible and tries to go, well, this is probably the same device that was used last time um, and it will remap your, your key bindings because basically what was happening is people's key bindings were being lost from devices because it thought they were as a new device because Windows keeps on reallocating its ID. Um, it's not a high priority for them at the moment. Obviously, hopefully, there will be a Windows fix at some point as well. Longer term, there are plans for emotes and animations that can be done in tandem with other players or groups. So um, something that's like a dance between people or a moat where people like high five or something is potentially going to be put in the game. Hair will be affected by wind and atmosphere and gravity. Part two of the character creator will have all their gene splicing tech and lots more customization and detail. Beards will also be a thing. Wind was um, moved over to this new unified system, which is going to be unique per moon and planet. They can have their own weather, their own wind, all that sort of stuff. Longer hair will very much so be affected by wind, whereas shorter hair might not be so much, if at all, because they want to be um, sensible with resources being allocated. When in hats or helmets, hair will be culled or placed in a skull cap or whatever's sensible. Anything that is um, sensible basically to be simulated or affected by wind and gravity will be. So they could um, have wires on guns or the chains of a monocle or an accessory piece uh, moving in wind and gravity as well. In the future, we should have some customizations of what animations we use for our characters as well. This could be how we walk, different emotes, different idols, dances, the way we run, that sort of stuff. The Hull series require animations and changes to the interior physics grids for when they compress down or expand. So obviously the Hull C can contract for landings or expand for taking on lots of cargo crates. They haven't finished work on that and it's required for the ship. So this isn't a current priority, but will be looked at in the future. Some of this tech that they actually make for that will be used for breaking ships apart and for various death states of ships as well. So this will be ships exploding or being damaged or whatever, but not killing everyone aboard. Potentially, um, those ships might be permanently disabled, broken into lots of large sections, um, and it might leave some of those sections functional, but detached from other parts. Uh, object container streaming allows them to do so much more in-game. It's something they've been waiting on for a long time. 
Larger areas are essential to have object container streaming in to make them work. It's core tech they require for a lot of their other features. It should give us some performance gains and make everything a lot more efficient for CIG. There are three different speeds of entry and exit animations that we will be getting. Walking, combat and emergency. The combat set is the one we kind of have in game already. It's the standard one. The other varying speeds are for role play and gameplay purposes. Obviously, some people will go, why would I ever walk? Well, maybe you'll walk in civilian areas where you don't need to run. But I'm sure that some people will always try and run at emergency speeds and use the fastest animations they can. Clouds as part of weather and on planets are different from the gas cloud tech they are currently working on. However, weather and clouds will be a thing in the game. They do cull out clothing from under layers when it comes to NPC and player clothing. This deals with clipping and helps performance, but it will allow for appropriate visible parts to still be seen. So if you are putting a um, t-shirt and then a shirt on top of it, if you could see part of that t-shirt, then you would. They haven't decided whether they're going to allow cancelling of animations like entering your ship. Um, so th the idea would be that you could jump off a ladder or something while you are midway through a animation for it or you're getting into your cockpit and you could go, oh, something's happening in the background, press space and jump off it. They haven't decided whether they're going to allow us to have that functionality yet. They are using inspiration from other games, from their mechanics and techniques and stuff that they've done right and wrong. They will not try to resolve a problem that's already been solved when it comes to systems, mechanics, and their engine. Some emotes and signals will be able to be performed while you're moving and doing other actions as well. Every month, we have a giveaway for Star Citizen. For this April, it's a massive salvage ship, the Aegis Reclaimer, provided by our featured app, MyRadar. MyRadar is a free weather app that also includes full-scale maps of the three moons of Crusader, including Yella, Selen, and Daemar. Users can scroll around the interactive maps and zoom in to the landscape to see the geography of those moons. My radar is available in the US, Europe, Japan, South Korea, and coming this summer to Australia. It is a real life weather app as well, so you can see the weather in your general area and in those countries too. It's available on iOS, Android, and Windows. Please check it out in the links below if you are interested. But to be in for a chance of that reclaimer, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos throughout April. Each video gives you another chance to win. Do you have any questions about Star Citizen, its development, gameplay mechanics, suggestions for videos, whatever, chuck them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. A special thank you to my Patreons for allowing me to create the amount of content I do. Ugh. If you're interested in becoming one of them, please find the links to Patreon as well as everything else we discussed down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me and I'll see you in the verse.